Psalm 30, the Revised Standard Version. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast drawn me up, and hast not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried to thee for help, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By thy favor, O Lord, thou hadst established me as a strong mountain. Thou didst hide thy face. I was dismayed. To thee, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise thee? Will it tell of thy faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast loosed my sackcloth and girded me with gladness, that my soul may praise thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to thee forever. Psalm 30, the Revised Standard Version, the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. How about we pray? Before we get into this, O Holy Father, we come before you, pleading nothing but the merit of thy Son's shed blood on the cross, Jesus the righteous. Thank you, Jesus the Nazarene, for giving your life for us, so that we could study your Bible, so we could get to know you more, so that we could have all the great benefits that God gives. We thank you when we praise and we exalt your name, Jesus, for you lifted us up from the grave. You gave us eternal life from among those who are perishing. You saved us who were lost. You are the great physician. We praise and we thank you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Psalm 30 is a, is a beautiful psalm. It's a fantastic psalm, and it is probably one of the last psalms we will do before my vacation commences and my child is born, but who knows? We never know, but the due date is April 10th and things are heating up. So we'll see what happens there. But let's let's get into this passage. I won't, I won't deal with it where it falls in the book of Psalms. Instead, I want to see where it stands on its own. What it is saying to us today and how we can get something I think very powerful and wonderful from this passage for us today in our lives. We can break up this psalm into four parts. Two of those parts are kind of repetitions of each other. The first part is verses 1 to 3. The psalmist is explaining the situation. God has drawn me up, he says. The Lord has helped me. God has aided me. And so I'm going to praise God because he answered my prayer. And so then he moves to the next section. That's verses 4 and 5. And he tells of a lesson that he learned that is causing him to to praise God on top of the answered prayer. And the lesson he learned is that God's anger, his displeasure, his his wrath, whatever trial or suffering we go through, it only lasts a moment compared to the realized mercy of God in our lives. There is no weight of suffering we will go through that will outweigh The praise and the glory will be given God for all the wonderful things that he has done for us. That's a pretty powerful and a pretty intense lesson. And so then he details, and this is the third section, verses 6 to 10, the nature of the lesson he went through. He was prosperous. Things were going well. And he recognized that it was God's mercy that had done this to him, that his life was going well. But then the Lord seemed to to remove that hand of protection from his life and then he, he became close to the gates of death. And it seemed like it was the end, the absolute end. But yet, in that moment, there was a turnaround. The Lord responded to his prayers, answered him. And then verse 11 and 12, the last section, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast loosed my sackcloth and girded me with gladness, 
Verse 12, that my soul may praise thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to thee forever. So verses 11 and 12 repeat what we began with. Verses 1 to 3, praise to the Lord for his answered prayer. Now the actual answer is not given. It's implied between verses 10 to 11 and based on the beginning of the psalm that God has answered the prayer and rescued the psalmist. And what we can take from this, as I said, there are two principal lessons. Two principal lessons. And these lessons are causing the psalmist to write to us and to tell us we owe a debt of praise to God. He is inviting us to sing with him to the Lord of God's great deliverance. That's what this psalm is about. It's an invitation on how God delivers people from certain death, how he rescues people from momentary sorrow and brings them an eternal weight of glory. And he's inviting us in light of these two facts of who God is and how he functions in the world to praise him. And that in fact, because this is who God is, we owe him a debt of praise. Let me zero in on verses 11 to 12. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast girded my sackcloth, thou hast loosed my sackcloth, sorry, and girded me with gladness, that, that my soul may praise thee and not be silent. We are helped, we are rescued by God to testify of that rescue, to praise him, to thank him, to give glory to his name for what he has done. Now we need not, and I don't think, we should interpret this psalm in a purely literal fashion. Now, it is true, and I I do believe this is true, that every Christian will have testimony of how God has helped them. Okay, we will all have testimony of how God has helped them, but that is not what this psalmist is praising God for. There is an answered prayer, but the specific nature of that prayer is verse 3. O Lord, Thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. The grave, the pit, these correspond to the outer darkness that Jesus talks about and to Hades in the New Testament. These these are the domain of the dead that nobody wants to go in. The place of torment and unhappiness. This is not where any of us want to go. And the psalmist is praising God because he has brought him back from death. Now, I think we see a direct comparison to Christ here, because Jesus is a man as well. He's the Son of God, he's fully divine, but he was also a man. And so the Bible tells us in Hebrews 5, 7, that during the days of Jesus' life on earth, I'm quoting now, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Jesus Christ was raised from the grave because he prayed and said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The Father responded to Christ on the cross because Christ prayed. Jesus prayed. And because Jesus prayed, he was heard. Because he cried out, he was answered. So we, we see this direct comparison to Christ, but we ourselves, because we pray, we are rescued from damnation. Because we pray, we need not die. We can have eternal life. Our body, our soul, all that we are need not go down to the grave in sorrow like those who have no hope, which is what verse 3 is implying. Those who go down to the pit, they don't have hope. There's no hope. There's no profit in their death. Verse 9, will the dust praise thee? Will it tell of thy faithfulness? It's an end. It's an unhappy end. But we as believers who have put our trust in Jesus, Jesus has brought us back from the dead. He has given us life. He has given us eternal life, a well of living water welling up within us. He has given us a great and a wonderful deliverance. That's what this psalm has in mind. And because of this great deliverance, we owe him, meaning God, meaning Christ, a debt of praise. 
my soul may praise thee and not be silent. It is our duty. It's a joyful and fantastic and amazing duty to sing songs to the Lord because of how wonderful and amazing he is, because he really has helped us. He really has rescued us. And there's another lesson buried in here, which I want to say before I move to our homiletical paraphrase, which is that we may go through times of trial. We may feel like God has looked away from us. And at times, indeed, it seems that God has left us to a place of testing, to a place of trial. But that is for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Even should we sin and the Lord punish us for our sin, because the Bible says he chastens his children, right? He chastens us. That chastening, that anger, it only lasts for a moment. His mercy is upon us for a whole life, meaning that anger is enveloped by his mercy. Whatever we do in this life as a child of God, even when we displease our Heavenly Father, and he brings punishment to us, the purpose of that punishment is not to make us suffer, but it is surrounded by his mercy. That's the meaning. The anger of the Lord is for a moment, but even during that moment of anger, his mercy, which lasts your whole life from beginning to end, is over you. Do you realize that? For if we should judge ourselves, we would not be judged. For when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord so that we should not be condemned with the world. God's punishment is his mercy upon us to restore us, to help us, to bring us to that place of praise. To bring us to that place of praise. And so the psalmist, he gives us these two lessons. The Lord has delivered us from certain death. He has rescued every single one of us. And he has done so through the cross of Christ. And on top of that, when we sin, when we fail, whatever time we go through where we feel abandoned, forsaken by God, That is a moment compared to the lifetime of mercy he has promised us. So therefore, in all situations, in all circumstance, we owe a fantastic debt of praise to the Lord. This debt of praise is a a very big theme in Scripture. Jesus taps into it when he enters into Jerusalem, when he's about to go to the cross. When he's about to go to the cross and he enters the city of Jerusalem, he says that if The children do not cry out, then the stones will cry out. There is a debt of praise for the work Christ is about to do. There's a debt of glory because he's about to do something wonderful and amazing. Awe and fame and reverence is due Jesus because of what he did. And that's a beautiful and a powerful and a wonderful thing. Do you know how amazing your salvation is? I think sometimes we don't feel it, but... That is not because there is something lacking in our salvation. God help us. Cry out to him and he will help you to appreciate, to praise him, to have the joy of the Lord that is your strength. He will turn for you your mourning into dancing. It's a beautiful psalm and I think it's a wonderful psalm for us to potentially end on before I go on vacation. That is all I would like to say on this particular passage. I hope there's Those things are clear. I'm now going to read our homiletical paraphrase of the psalm. So that's Psalm 30, the homiletical paraphrase. I lift up your name to be praised, O Lord, for you have lifted me up. You have not let my enemies lift up their voices in victory over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you for help, and you healed me. You, O Lord, lifted up my soul from the grave. You delivered me from the land of the dead. So then, sing praise to the Lord, O saints. Give thanks to him for his holiness. For his wrath is for a moment, but his mercy lasts a lifetime. For this is what happened to me. When I was doing well, I said, nothing will shake me. For by your mercy, O Lord, you made me secure like a mighty mountain. But then you turned away from me and my joyful life crumbled. I called out to you, O Lord. I poured out prayers to you. What benefit is there for me to die if I go down to the land of the dead? Will what remains of my corpse praise you? Will it sing of your unfailing love? Please hear me, O Lord. Have mercy on me. You are the one I depend on. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You took away my funeral clothes and clothed me in joy so that my soul would praise you and not be silent. 
O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Psalm 30, a homiletical paraphrase of the psalm.